With the world's third largest natural gas reserves, Qatar has one of the highest per capita incomes in the world. This country is taking its future seriously and aims to reduce high dependence on oil and gas by diversifying the economy. This will open up vast opportunities, which is encouraging for UK companies. But what makes Qatar so unique is the vision of the ruling Emir, who is dedicated to creating a forward-thinking nation and to position its capital, Doha, as the new financial center of the Gulf. The cultural landscape in Doha is evolving dramatically, and just as the Guggenheim Museum put Bilbao on the map, Doha's new Museum of Islamic Art is said to be an iconic institution of international prominence. It represents the intellectual sophistication and philanthropic ambitions of the nation. And the global media brand Al Jazeera, headquartered in Doha, reflects a dynamic work environment that makes Qatar an interesting place to do business. And Al Jazeera is very popular, it's, it's watched around the region and now beyond. I think it, it has established itself in the last few years as a serious channel and as a platform for a range of opinions to be aired and expressed. And I think creating an environment in which something like Al Jazeera can exist and operate is, is perhaps another facet of, of how Qatar is, is distinct uh, and, and, and how it sees itself moving forward in, over the next few years. With an estimated $150 billion in projects and development, Qatar is likely to remain a country offering vast opportunities in construction as it upgrades and expands its power, transport and water networks. As the city skyline takes shape, we get a sense of innovation and purpose behind this rapid growth to ensure the city's evolution is sustainable. The opportunities here in the construction sector are very significant. In the next five years or so, some of the estimates suggest that well over 100 billion US dollars will be invested in infrastructure. We're going to see up to 50 new hotels. There's a new airport um, which is taking shape now and which will be open at some point in the next couple of years. Um, and there are plans for, for new roads, the causeway between Qatar and Bahrain. So there are some really huge infrastructure projects. The inspiring vision and strategy of the current Emir led to the creation of the Qatar Foundation. Its mission is to develop and utilize human potential based on the philosophy that people, particularly the younger generation, are the most valuable assets and resources of a nation. The Qatar Science and Technology Park is one of the foundation's initiatives and has been set up as a global hub for high-tech companies. Shell, one of the first companies to set up here, operates a research and development facility, which has been one of their largest investments to date. In a very distinct way, Qatar has placed education at the heart of its vision and at the core of its development program, so there are real opportunities for UK education providers. In terms of opportunities in education, you have a population which has more than doubled in the last five years and which is going to continue to grow in the future very rapidly. So you have flowing from that a need for school places, both at primary level, secondary level, but also you have as well, I think, a determination here, an ambition of, to educate Qataris and to prepare them for, for the workplace. There is going to be significant investment in the university sector. There are also discussions going on with uh, uh, many UK universities about uh, collaboration and there is certainly a huge appetite for, for high quality education and the UK is looked to as a potential source for a lot of that high quality education. One of the factors that is setting Doha apart from the regional pack is its ever improving regulatory climate. There is now a process underway of integrating market supervision to come under the umbrella of a new unified financial services regulator. This is taken from a UK model and operates from the Qatar Financial Center. UKTI specialists and advisors have a strong working knowledge of their market and an extensive network of contacts. Much of the business is built on strong relationships, so these introductions are invaluable to anyone considering doing business in the region. A lot of business in the Middle East, it really is about people, it's about relationships and networks, and building those networks is without question the first step in terms of exploring export opportunities in the region. So something like Britain in the region, which brings together colleagues from around the Middle East and puts them together with UK companies and with business people based in the region who know the culture, who understand the business ethics. That is a great forum in terms of helping to build those networks, but also in terms of offering uh, a one-stop shop for advice. There is really significant investment going on in Qatar and the economy is being diversified at a rapid rate. 
Qatar's imports have quadrupled in the last five years. UK exports to Qatar have uh, grown two and a half times in the same period. All those things are a reflection of the, the level of opportunity and the diversification that's going on, the investment that's now taking place. No country is immune from the current global economic turmoil and Qatar, like everywhere else, is going to be affected to some extent. It is more insulated from the downturn than many other markets and as a state strategy has been developed with sustainability in mind, growth and development will continue over the next few years. Looking at its track record, Doha is said to remain a vibrant and flourishing environment for both trade and investment.